A name you won't have heard mentioned on the channel very often is Enamax, but that is about to change today because I have two Enamax Aquafusion ADV AIOs to take a look at. The 240 and 360 millimeter versions both come with 120 millimeter PWM fans, ARGB lighting effects, and an infinity mirror design to the CPU block. They also come with very competitive pricing, which means they are direct competitors to the likes of Deepcool, Arctic and Endorphi. But in terms of performance, how will they compare? Let's take a look. So the Enamax Aquafusion ADV series, it's been around for a while, I think they released somewhere around about September last year. It's available in 120, 240 and 360mm versions, all come with RGB lighting and the infinity mirror design to the CPU block. Aquafusion ADV series is available in the US and across parts of Europe. Difficult to get hold of currently in the UK, but apparently Enemax is working on uh, securing a UK supplier. UK buyers should be able to find it on Amazon DE and pick it up from there, but it's not available currently at places like OCUK or Scan or anywhere like that. If you are in the US, you can pick these up and across Europe. The uh, pricing seems pretty competitive as well. The 120 millimeter version is priced around $79 or 69 euros. The 240 is priced at $99 and 99 euros. And then the flagship 360 millimeter version, that's priced around $119 or 119 euros. So the uh, pricing is competitive and it competes with the likes of Deepcool and Arctic and those other established budget brands. In terms of features of the Aquafusion ADV series, all sizes come with a patented dual chamber water block design that isolates the pump from heat to prolong lifespan, an acrylic pump top with a luminous Aura Belt 3D layer design for unique RGB lighting effects, and Squaw RGB fans featuring a vortex frame design to generate stronger air pressure. Aquafusion coolers are compatible with all current desktop platforms from Intel and and AMD including LGA1700 and AMD AM5. Radiator is manufactured from aluminium. The cold plate is made from copper. Fans have a speed range of 500 to 2000 RPM PWM controlled and five volt three pin ARGB lighting effects. In the box with the cooler, you get all the usual accessories. So things like an Intel mounting back plate, Intel upper mounting brackets, AM4, AM5, mounting brackets. There's a couple of different standoffs for Intel platforms, a bag with long and short fan screws, a bag with the AMD, AM4 and AM5 standoffs, the extension cables or the uh, splitter cables for the PWM fans. There's also a power adapter as well for the fans. So if you don't want to power the fans from a motherboard header, you can plug it into that and power the fans via SATA. You also get a RGB controller and a good thing with this cooler is you don't need a specific RGB controller with proprietary connections. It uses standard three pin five volt connections. It's just a simple controller with three different buttons. Uh, a couple of different adapter cables as well for the RGB lighting in case the headers on the motherboard are different. With the cooler on the base plate, there isn't any pre-applied thermal compound, but Enemax does include a small tube of thermal compound inside the box so that should be good hopefully for a couple of installations. You also get obviously the fans so with the 360 millimeter version there's three fans these are the Enemax Squaw RGB fans really strange name um, I think it's kind of meant to mean square because of the square shape of the fans but they are called the Squaw RGB as I say that's a very strange name and with the fans you get PWM control, a speed range of 500 to 2000 RPM, two zones of RGB lighting. So this ring around the outside of the fan frame that illuminates with RGB as well as the opaque blade. You notice as well, it's quite a small hub on the fan. So the blades are able to be larger. And on the back, I think there's 13 of these veins on the back and these are supposed to improve air pressure. The only thing I can see with those is with there being so many they may create extra noise that's unnecessary. Every time the fan blade passes over them, it will 
create some turbulence and probably some noise. You can also see on the four corners of the fans, anti-vibration rubber mounts and the connections on the fans. So the speed connection is four pin PWM control and then the uh, RGB lighting connections, as I say, are standard three pin five volt connections but they're not a bad looking fan they are quite square in shape speed as i say 500 to 2000 rpm maximum airflow is 79.8 cubic feet per minute maximum air pressure is 3.6 millimeters h2o and maximum noise output is 36.2 decibels so they're the enemax squaw rgb fans and as i say with the 360 mil version you get three of those with a 240 you get two we do have two samples of this cooler a 240 and this 360 i'll add the performance data to both but i'm going to concentrate on the 360 for the review and to take a closer look at so if we take a look at the actual cooler the radiator it's a pretty standard aluminium radiator standard looking approximately 25 to 27 millimeters thick there's no fill port as such I'm guessing under that plug is probably where the radiator is filled. It does have these mounting frames for the fans and they're in almost a glossy finish. It's not quite a glossy finish, but it's not a dull matte finish. It's like a, a glossy satin finish, if you will. And uh, they've got the Enemax logos on both sides there. At the radiator side, the tubing is fixed in position and it's a braided rubber tubing so it's a rubber tubing with a braided sleeve covering as we used to say this was a premium feature not so much now this braided sleeving we see on almost every single aio cpu cooler and as you can see down at the uh, cpu block side you have two of these articulating 90 degree fittings and these uh, they come in useful when you're installing and if you want to change the orientation of the tube and it's it's easy to do so with those articulating 90 degree fittings. On the side here is where you mount the uh, mounting bracket. So if you want to install it onto AMD, you just pop the AMD bracket in there and there's a couple of screws you put in and uh, it's pretty simple really. Same for Intel with the Intel upper mounting brackets. They screw into the same position. As I say, installation process is pretty simple. I'll run you through that in a moment. At the base of the CPU cooler, it comes covered with this protective film. There's no pre-applied thermal compound. You do have to apply the thermal compound yourself. And you can see it is a large square copper cold plate. Inside here is a dual chamber pump design. So there's one chamber towards the bottom and then a chamber that's a little higher up that houses the pump. And apparently it's designed like that to try and keep heat away from the pump to aid longevity of the pump unit. And then on the top, you've got a very reflective acrylic top cover and under there is the Enemax logo and some other RGB lighting effects. In terms of connections on the pump, so you have a fixed cable here with a three pin fan header connection. So this is to control the pump speed and then underneath this small rubber grommet is another connection there and you can connect up another cable to that and control the RGB lighting effects either by using the controller that comes with the cooler or you can connect to the motherboard and synchronize it with motherboard software. As I say, it's compatible with all current desktop platforms from Intel and from AMD. There's no high-end desktop, no thread ripper or anything like that compatibility. In terms of tubing length, which is something I didn't say, the uh, tubing length is 400 millimeters approximately, which is pretty much kind of the standard length you get these days and it should be enough in mid tower cases to be able to mount your radiator at the front of the case and have the tubing located at the bottom. As I said, it's a pretty easy installation process. There is a user manual that comes with the Aquafusion coolers. In there, you will find the installation on both Intel and AMD platforms. Well documented, it's easy to follow. I'm using an AMD AM5 test system, so I'll quickly run through the AMD AM5 installation process. As you can see, I already have the fans installed to the radiator. Whether you do this at the start of the installation or at the end, 
will depend on where you locate the radiator in your system and whether you're running a push-pull configuration. I've already got the fans installed. It's a basic installation on AM5, so I'll be using the motherboard to control RGB lighting and to control fan speed. So it's just the bare minimum you need for this installation. Obviously, if you want to use a controller, it'll involve a little bit more wiring. But for the bare minimum installation, you'll obviously need the cooler. You'll also need the AM5, AM4 upper mounting brackets, AM5 standoffs, also they work on AM4 as well. You'll need the thumb screws as well, so these are spring-loaded thumb screws, four of those. You'll also need four of these little countersunk screws which hold the AM5 bracket in place, and you'll also need the uh, RGB cable that goes from the pump housing to the motherboard, and also you will need the fan splitter cable as well. So as I say, fans are installed. I know I'm gonna be using the motherboard lighting, so I just pop the little rubber grommet off and uh, connect up this RGB extension cable. So that just plugs it in directly to the pump unit there. Then you've just got two wires coming from the CPU block. You'll then need to screw the AM5 upper mounting brackets in position, so I'll just pop them in place there and then just screw two of the small countersink screws in place and do it the same thing for the other side. That's all the preparation really for the block but obviously one thing that you don't want to forget is removal of this protective piece of plastic so that needs to be removed and as you can see there's no pre-applied thermal compound so we'll need to apply some thermal compound to the CPU. The only difference between the AMD installation and the Intel installation is the uh, backplate with AMD. You don't need to put any backplate on, it uses the stock AM4, AM5 backplate, but with Intel, you will have to prepare the backplate as well. So just remove the stock upper mounting brackets for AM5, and then screw the AM5 standoffs in position. Once those are in place, you can apply some thermal paste to the CPU. Should be the perfect amount. Align the block with the standoffs, press that down in position, and grab the spring loaded thumb screws. You just want to screw these on by hand initially, and then you can do the final tightening with a screwdriver. Remember to try and tighten these up evenly and progressively, going from one corner to another. Connect the wiring from the pump to the motherboard, so the pump power needs to go to the CPU option header. Then the uh, RGB cable from the pump can actually be daisy chained to one of the RGB cables from the fans. Just connect those together and then you can daisy chain the rest of the fans and connect them up to the RGB header on the motherboard and connect the splitter cable also to the fans for the PWM control, and then connect the PWM cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. That's pretty much it for the installation process. As I say, it is very simple, especially if you're going to be controlling the RGB lighting with the motherboard. There's a slightly more wiring to do if you use the included controller, but as I say, it's very simple. Even with the additional wiring, you can probably get this installed in 15 minutes. If you're a novice, follow the installation manual. You shouldn't have a problem at all. So let's turn our attention to the thermal performance of these Aquafusion AIOs. We ran the Aquafusion test on the 79. 50x test bench we will be bringing the 13900k test bench in as well very soon by the next review that data should be available we are working on testing coolers on the intel 13900k now if you want to check out the full testing methodology make sure you head over to kitguru.net the full written review is on there all the information is there make sure you check that out let's start by looking at noise output as this will give us a good indication of performance based on noise with fans running at maximum rpm the aquafusion coolers are loud at 100 percent duty cycle the gigabyte bios reported a maximum fan speed of 2000 rpm at 53 decibels output the 360 millimeter aquafusion is bordering on noise output that is very distracting with one less fan the 240 millimeter 
has a marginally lower output, but at 51 decibels, it is still very loud for a 240 millimeter unit. With the fans operating at maximum RPM, the 360 Aquafusion produces mid-range performance. Other coolers in a similar price range, such as the Deepcool LT720, Endorphin Navis F360, and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, all outperform the Aquafusion. But it still performs on par with some other more expensive 360 millimeter AIOs. At maximum fan speed, the 240 millimeter Aquafusion is towards the bottom end of the chart, which is to be expected on a higher performance CPU, performing on par with other 240 millimeter coolers. Tuning fan speed down to 40 decibels output reduces the thermal performance of the 360 millimeter Aquafusion only slightly, so it retains its middle of the road performance, but the 240 millimeter unit is affected significantly by the reduction in fan RPM and thermal performance on the 7950X drops off the cliff with an average delta of 81 degrees C. This means the actual CPU temperature hit upwards of 105 C, which is at the point where the system would shut down to prevent damage to the CPU. CPU temperature isn't the main point of interest in the PBO test as a delta will be within a few degrees between all coolers. The important metric is CPU clock multiplier. The Aquafusion 360 holds onto a 51.2 times average clock multiplier while cooling just under 200 watts of package power, which is solid performance. With fans at maximum RPM in the PBO test, the Aquafusion 240 performance is again trading blows with other coolers with an average clock multiplier of 50.7 times. However, some similar price coolers are still outperforming the Aquafusion 240 by a few hundred megahertz clock speed, which means more CPU performance. So the Aquafusion thermal performance is it's okay. The 360mm version is performing on par with some other 360mm AOs, which is good. It's okay to use it on a high power CPU like the 7950X or the equivalent powered Intel CPU. So we don't need to worry too much about the thermal performance of the 360. However, there are other CPU coolers that are similar price to this that do offer a bit better performance. So if you are in the market for a 360 and you are looking to be efficient with your spending, then it might be worth shopping around a little. In terms of looks, it's not a bad looking CPU cooler. The RGB lighting effects on the fans are pretty decent. There is some light bleed from the fan hubs, but we see that a lot, especially on the lower end and the cheaper coolers. But installing the CPU block and configuring the Cooler is easy, RGB lighting, plugs directly into the motherboard. It's standard three pin five volt ARGB lighting. So you could potentially daisy chain other things into the, uh, the cooler and control it with the motherboard and it would all be synchronized nice and easily. The controller that comes with it is nice and simple. There's no difficult or confusing software to set up. Everything's done by a touch of a few buttons. So it's a nice, easy, simple cooler to install. It looks okay. Thermal performance is not bad. The 240 was slightly disappointing when you turned the fan speed down. Things like the Endorphi Navis F240 offered a bit better thermal performance than the Aquafusion 240. So that was slightly disappointing, but the 360 seems like reasonable value for money. Installation is simple. So for a budget cooler, it's not too bad. However, like I say, there are alternatives out there that do perform slightly better. There's a couple of minor niggles I had with it as well. The finish on this top acrylic cover, it's not the best, but it is a budget cooler. So got to compromise, I guess, somewhere between quality and price. But overall, it's not a bad CPU cooler. Would I buy this myself? Possibly if RGB lighting was the main theme of the system. But if I was looking performance and lower noise levels, I'd probably not choose this over something like the Endorphi Navis F360 or the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. But if you want RGB lighting effects that are easy to synchronize with the motherboard and easy to control, then it might be worth thinking about. Thanks for watching this review of the Enamax Aquafusion ADV series AIOs. Let us know what you think of these coolers in the comment section. Is this something you'd buy for your own system or a build you've got coming up in the future? If you've enjoyed watching this review, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, head over to the store, pick up some of our merch, 
or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.